Great Hal Jackson, host of WBLS Radio's iconic Sunday classic show, was the first African American to be inducted into the NAB Broadcasting Hall of Fame. His talented team's international organization is now celebrating its 50th anniversary, honoring Jackson's legendary radio career and philanthropy. Joining us today is Hal Jackson's widow, Debbie Jackson, president of the Youth Development Foundation, Inc., and Grammy Award-winning singer, producer, Jeff Red, thank you both for being with us this afternoon. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Royalty in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and we're with royalty. Absolutely. Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I am still a working stiff. <laughs> it's nice to have you here with us this afternoon and, and to hear about this celebration. I grew up in Texas, so I didn't, you know, listen on the radio to you guys. But man, did I know who Hal Jackson was. <laughs> um, I, it's, it's so funny, my producer who grew up with here, she, you say Hal Jackson and everybody listens. Um, 50 years of doing this, why is it important for you is, at this point to, to celebrate that legacy? Because I want to keep that le legacy going. Um, he did so much for so many different people. It wasn't just the talented teens, it was also entertainers mm -hmm. as well. And so therefore what we're trying to do is to keep it going and keep education alive uh, within our ranks because the... Um, the proceeds from yes. this event is going to the Youth Development Foundation and what we do is give scholarships to young ladies entering college. All we have to do is maintain a 3.0 mm -hmm. GPA, send us a, their transcript, and we send the money directly to the college. You know, you were right there with him on the air. Mm -hmm. um, you know, c classic music, everybody knew where to turn on to a Sunday. Would he be surprised by how much radio has changed these days? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've seen the difference because when we started doing that program, we were playing 45s and 78s mm -hmm. and 33s. And 78s. <laughs> right, it was the 33s. <laughs> and um, when we left there, we were playing MP3s. Mm -hmm. You know, well, no, the rest of the station was playing MP3s. We were still playing CDs. Okay. But things were into the computer, so things had changed yeah. drastically. CDs sound okay to me. Right. They still do. <laughs> and they still do. Yes. And That's they right. still do. Yes. Why, look, he could have just been a, a, a star himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it seemed that it was a, a, an important part of, of his life. And we talk about his legacy now, but, but then is that he had to be in a position, wanted to be in a position to change other people's lives. Why was that so important to him? He was one who always would give. He believed that a clenched fist cannot receive. So you have to give for it to come back to you. And he gave, he, if you said that you wanted to go to the moon, he'd say, okay, let's see what we can find a rocket, you know, to get you on. He was always one to push people all the time. Yeah, and look, I bring you into the conversation, Jeff. Um, you know how tough your business is. Absolutely. Um, were there many people like Hal Jackson around? There were at the time, and like I said, the beauty about Hal Jackson is that this is pre-social media. Mm -hmm. So you had an opportunity to get your record played on the radio as well as perform in front of an audience. Yeah. So he was the guy that everyone knew, and I mean, she'll give you the list of the people that passed through the agent, the, the, um, the gala that he does, man. So like I said, this is a, a time where people should give because he's really done an exceptional job over the last 50 years. So although he's gone, she's keeping her legacy going. And you're going to be performing. I'm going to be performing. We're going to have some fun that night. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's going to be myself, the ladies of Sky, Howard Hewitt, mm -hmm. Lisa Morgan. And um, we're gonna have a great time. Yeah, well, you've already named you, you name dropper here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also now, Melissa Morgan was a talented team. Oh, was she? I didn't know that. And she was on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's on the show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, she's on your show, but yeah. she was on our show before. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> she, she sure was. Um, E and you called and told me you wouldn't be happy. You're not going to be singing that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I've got to sing you called and told me. That's my signature song from the Strictly Vision soundtrack. And um, again, Hal was a part of that as well. So, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing for me to be able to give back. And I'm so glad that Debbie is keeping the legacy going. It's very yeah. important. I'm sorry for interrupting. We've been celebrating the, you know, the 50th of hip-hop this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I, I want to ask you in particular, isn't it, why is it so important that we preserve the classic R&B? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a funny thing because there was rumor out there that R&B was dead. Mm -hmm. R&B never died. Yeah. Because if you listen to a lot of the hip-hop music, they have melodies, yeah. they have choruses. It's R&B because hip-hop started out sampling R&B. Mm -hmm. So you can never say that R&B is gone. And yeah. it's very important that we keep it going because at this point in time, radio has really been overkill on hip-hop. Yeah. And a lot of the radio stations now you know, by the grace of God, they play old R&B, but it's time to start playing some new R&B and bringing some new artists. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's kind of the music business. It's, it's, it's a little cyclical in a lot of ways. Absolutely. And nothing ever really goes away because we're always reaching back Absolutely. and sampling. And if it's a good song, it's a good it's song. It's a good song. Right? right. I, I want to go back um, to your foundation, Miss Jackson. Um, because you are continuing your husband's legacy. Mm -hmm. Are you not? I am. And how important is that to you? You know, you oh, could please. sit back and just relax and rest on your laurels if you wanted to. I could, but no. Um, he taught me. He taught me to always give, to keep giving, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep giving as long as there's money in that account. <laughs> there will be scholarships that will be issued. Okay. And that's where the money is that you're raising from this. Correct. It's going, it's to, going to the scholarships. Yeah. The scholarship and, uh, and, and how do folks access that? I mean, do they apply? do they how does that work we have an application online at our website which is youthdevelopmentfoundation.org they apply and it's only for women mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they apply and uh, they go through a screening process and then we select five young ladies what I had did was um, I partnered with black women for black girls mm -hmm. and we would get five young ladies and instead of having a baby shower yeah. we coined the phrase college shower mm -hmm. and so we'd have a college shower for them to help them uh, get their their, their college dorm room together yeah uh, okay. go to well it was Bed Bath & Beyond now it's Target I call Target Target <laughs> yeah so do I <laughs> oh okay <laughs> and um, we would all you know uh, and there'd be five young ladies we'd have huge those six foot tables full of comforters and pillows and just different things for them to have yeah. for their for their college uh, dorm rooms and um, then after they they enter college and they finish their first semester they send their transcript and and I want to say about 95 percent of the young ladies maintain a 3.0 or better we have been awarding those scholarships you know because we stopped talented teens in 2010 mm -hmm. and so from then on that's when we started awarding the scholarships yeah all right and, and Jeff before we let you go I want to ask you just your thoughts about the music industry now and any advice you have for young talent I mean you you have managed to last one because you're talented mm -hmm. but you, you also pivoted in a way you have uh, uh, part of your legacy is that you've helped other artists get artists 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 get their careers started yes. what, what would you suggest to young talent out there wanting to get started in the business these days the main thing I say to them is be true to yourself mm -hmm. don't make music based on what you hear right now make music that comes from the heart and we were when we were making music it was a time where we didn't know I didn't know that a song that I made would be 30 how long is the oldest song 30 four years old mm -hmm. this year 35 years this year wow and um never knew that it was going to be that way but we were making records because that's how we felt yeah everybody in the studio was dancing and then we go test it on the radio and the radio works and then now we you know we're off to the races so yeah. i just say be true to yourself and of course i'm always telling them to keep god at first and everything you yeah. do and um have fun with it yeah have fun and work hard and work hard and work hard so I'll send folks to youthdevelopmentfoundation.org. Correct. Mm -hmm. The fundraiser, 50th anniversary, Hal Jackson's Talented Teens International Fundraiser, November 9th at Bergen Pack in Englewood, New Jersey. Thank you both for sitting down with us this Thank afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. Yes. Um, Always nice to hear about good news. Yes, sure. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back.